Hi guys, it's Teacher Elam once again, and finally I'm back. To those who just uh, tuned in today, welcome to Elam Academy. This is your reviewer on the go, where you can study anytime and anywhere, and prepare for your upcoming college entrance exams by just listening or watching my videos. For today, we'll focus on some basic concepts in chemistry that's to help you refresh your memory. And for today's exercise, there's a total of 10 items. Let's start! For question number one, which of the groups of matter is homogeneous in form? A. Colloid B. Compound C. Solvent and D. Suspension You have five seconds to answer. Go. The correct answer is letter B. Compound A homogeneous mixture has the same uniform appearance and composition throughout. And an example of homogeneous mixture are solutions. For example, when you mix sugar and water, you will see that there is only one phase, which is liquid. You won't see the sugar granules as separate anymore when you completely uh, dissolve them in water. Meanwhile, a heterogeneous mixture consists of visibly different substances or phases. Ibig sabihin, may makikita kang gas, yung isa naman liquid, yung isa solid, or any of those combinations. An example of a heterogeneous mixture is a suspension. Say, when you mix sand and water, you will see that the sand will settle to the bottom. So, you will see here two phases, the liquid, which is the water, and the um, solid, which is the sand. And that's a heterogeneous mixture. Compounds, meanwhile, are chemical combinations of two or more kinds of atoms, and they are always homogeneous. An example of this is water. For question number two, aluminum hydroxide is used as an antacid and is taken by people with hyperacidity. Which of the following statements is incorrect? A. It tastes bitter. B. Its pH is greater than 7. C. It turns blue litmus paper to red. And D. It releases hydroxide ions in water solutions. Go. Ang tamang sagot ay letter C. Antacids such as Kremel S, they work by counteracting or neutralizing the acid in your stomach. And antacids are able to neutralize the acids or the gastric juices because they are precisely bases or alkalis. So dito, naghahanap tayo ng statement na incorrect. Antacids are bases, and bases, for one, they taste bitter, they have a pH of greater than 7, while acids have a pH of less than 7. They also turn red litmus paper to blue, while acids turn blue litmus paper to red. So, letter C, it turns blue litmus paper to red. That is a characteristic of acids and not bases. For question number three, which of the following statements regarding water as a compound is true? A. Its composition is variable. B. Hydrogen and oxygen are physically combined. Letter C. Water is easily broken down into its individual elements. And D. Water has properties that are different from either hydrogen or oxygen alone. The correct answer is letter D. When you have a compound such as water, the atoms are chemically combined. So letter B is uh, incorrect. We can eliminate that already. Since the atoms are chemically combined, then it would have properties that are different from either hydrogen or oxygen alone. Unlike when you have a mixture of, uh, say, salt and water, in the salt water that you get or the saline solution, the solution would retain properties of the water and the salt. Alright, question number four. How do you describe a solution that contains the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve at a certain temperature? A. It is saturated. B. It is unsaturated. C. It is concentrated. And D. It is super saturated. The correct answer is letter A. 
when you say saturated solution, this is the solution that contains the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve at a certain temperature. So, if you have a saturated sugar solution, kahit na magdagdag ka pa ng mas maraming sugar, hindi na siya kayang i-dissolve ng solvent mo, like uh, yung water. So, yung mangyayari, the undissolved sugar will just go to the bottom of your container. Meanwhile, when you say unsaturated solution, um, this solution contains less than the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved. And a super saturated solution, it contains more than the maximum that can be dissolved at a certain temperature. Alright? So now we are in question number 5. And the question is, acid rain forms when pollutants such as carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide mix with the precipitation, such as rain. Which of the following is an effect of acid rain? A. The quality of groundwater is enriched. B. It brings back the nutrients to the earth. C. It causes injury to the tissues of plants. And D. It makes the chemistry of the soil too sour for the plants. Time's up! The correct answer is letter C. Because of the acidity from the acid rain, it can actually cause injury to plants. In fact, acid rain can damage the surfaces of buildings, our monuments, they can damage cars. So, mas lalo that it will cause injury to the tissues of plants. A is incorrect. In fact, acid rain damages our water sources because it may cause the pH of our water source to go below the normal range and that can be actually deadly to aquatic life. Letter D is incorrect because plants do not have a sense of taste. If the statement said acid rain may make the chemistry of the soil too acidic for plants, then that would be a correct answer. But here, the term that was used was too sour, so that the statement is not precise or it's incorrect. Question number 6. An unknown substance turns blue litmus paper to red. Which of the following is most likely true? A. Its pH is less than 7. B. The compound is a base. C. The substance is not pure. And D. The substance has a soapy feel. Ang tamang sagot dyan ay letter A. Its pH is less than 7. So here we have another question on acids and bases. So, siguraduhin nyo talaga na naiintindihan nyo yung concept ng acids and bases. Just remember our mnemonic device which is BRA. B-R-A. So, if the substance turns blue, litmus paper to red, B2R, then it is an acid. And acids have a pH of less than 7. Conversely, if the substance turns red litmus paper to blue, yung kabaliktaran, then that is a base. And bases would have a pH of greater than 7 up to 14. So remember in your pH scale, um, water, pure water would have a pH of 7 which is neutral. Less than that would be acidic and more than that would be basic or alkaline. Okay? Question number 7. Sulfur is an element that is used in soaps, fertilizers, and fireworks. It is a gas and has a low boiling point. What is the correct classification of sulfur? A. Metal B. Metalloid C. Non-metal and D. Superconductor The correct answer is letter C. So the given statement would give us clues and several of the non-metals are gases. Non-metals are actually poor conductors of heat and electricity because the electrons are not free to move as compared to metals. In addition, non-metals lack the metallic bond that exists between the atoms in uh, metals and therefore, mas madali siyang magboil. Whereas metals would have that strong metallic bonds between their atoms and it would have a higher boiling point. So here, the correct answer is letter C. Question number 8. Which of the following materials will dissolve more quickly when mixed with water? A. Sugar balls B. Sugar strips C. Sugar cubes D. Sugar granules Go! And the correct answer is letter D. Because among the four, it is indeed that you have the smallest solute particles. One factor that affects the rate of dissolving is the size of the solute particles. Kasi, 
mas malaki yung surface area that comes in contact with the solvent. So, mas marami ang solute and solvent na nag interact kasi mas maliit yung solute particles. Letter D, sugar granules will dissolve the fastest. Although, it can be argued that in A to C, they may be correct if the particles are smaller than granules, say they are microscopic balls, microscopic uh, cubes. However, the best answer is D because when you say granules, they are, by definition, small particles. Okay? Question number 9. Which of the following statements does not describe a non-metal? A. It has a dull appearance. B. It is not ductile or malleable. C. It easily gives or donates electrons. And D. It has low density and melting point. The correct answer is letter C. Elements that are metals tend to lose or donate electrons. So, mas mahilig sila mag bigay ng electrons. Whereas, elements that are non-metals tend to gain electrons. So, yung mga non-metals naman, ito yung nag-accept ng mga electrons. And they become negatively charged. Whereas, the, the metals, when they lose or donate electrons, they lose that negative charge. So, in fact, they become positively charged. The correct answer is letter C. And the last question, for our last question, carbon is in group 4 of the periodic table of elements. It has 4 valence electrons. The latter means that A. Carbon has a total of 4 electrons. B. Carbon has 4 atomic orbitals. C. Carbon also has 4 neutrons. And D. Carbon has 4 electrons in its outermost shell. And the correct answer is letter D. Valence electrons pertain to the electrons in the outermost shell of your atom. So when we say that carbon has four valence electrons, hindi ibig sabihin na meron siyang total of four electrons. It just means that carbon has four electrons in its outermost shell. In other words, or in effect, carbon would have a total of more than four electrons, there being four electrons in its outermost shell. So the correct answer is letter D. And letter A, carbon has a total of 4 electrons. That statement would be incorrect. Alright? So that's it for today. Sana nakatulong ako para ma-refresh yung memory nyo on some basic concepts in chemistry. If you liked the video, don't forget to like it. And please subscribe also for more content and exercises. If you have questions, you may just comment below. Good luck on your exams!